Good morning. How are you doing today? If you are joining me for the replay, hit like. Let me know in the comments that you're here. I love hearing from you. Uh, and ask me any questions that you have. Today, I'm going to talk to you about four things. I'm going to talk to you about some questions that came up. I'm going to talk about the question of the week or questions of the week. I'm going to talk about, and that's going to be around tea storage and Irish tea. I'm going to talk about a book recommendation that I have. I'm also going to talk to you about a self-care recommendation that I have. So this week, uh, I have a question that came from Kathleen. And it goes like this. Hi, Dina. I just watched your YouTube video, The One Thing I Wish I Knew Sooner About Steeping Loose Leaf Tea. Great video. I learned a lot, and you are very relatable. Thank you very much, Kathleen. I am looking forward to drinking tea the way it was meant to be. I have been drinking bitter, overbrewed, tummy ache inducing tea dust because that's how my mom and grandma did it, right? I mean, that's how my mom did it. I have a few questions. Can you help me? First, what do I do with the loose tea that was steeped already that I want to save for the next day? So how do I store it? Second, how long will the used wet tea keep? Third, I currently use Twining's Irish Breakfast Tea Loose Tea Bags. What tea would be similar in flavor? I've never liked Earl Grey. Four, with Twining's Loose Tea, some of it always makes its way through the infuser and I can't drink it to the last drop. I can live with that unless you say there's a better way. Thanks for your help. Thank you so much for your questions, Kathleen. I really appreciate it. And I've had some of these questions before, so I think that there are other people out there who want the answer to them. So, all right, so let's take them one at a time. The first thing I wanna talk about are wet tea leaves because tea is a food item, just like anything else, right? So if we have something that's already cooked, we have to be careful about how we store it. So these leaves have already been cooked. I don't use tea leaves more than that day. And for, I'll give you an example of how I use, how I brew my tea leaves when I'm at work, because I think this is kind of an example that might fit some of you. I use a tea infuser and I leave the tea leaves in there. I brew it once in the morning before I go to court. And I'm in court for about three to four hours. And then I come back from court and then I fill up my tea again, re-steeping the teas. I brew it a little bit longer, of course, so that I get more flavor from the leaves. And then what I do is I'll put that tea, um, tea infuser aside with the tea leaves. I'll go back to court or I'll be working on something else in the office. And then I will come back and I'll brew myself another cup of tea, maybe an hour later or you know, 30 minutes later. It kind of depends on how much tea I'm drinking that day. And I, that's as long as I will use it. I will use it throughout the day. I do not save the leaves. I do not refrigerate the leaves. I do not do anything like that with the leaves because I don't think it's, it's safe. I don't think it's going to taste good either. So uh, my mom had asked me this question because she actually wanted to save her tea leaves for the next day. And I said, I really wouldn't recommend doing that. And I wouldn't recommend refrigerating them either. If you have read any of my blogs, you might already know this, but when you're storing dry tea leaves, you don't want to put them in a refrigerator. You want to keep them in a cool, dry place, so you don't want them over a microwave, over a refrigerator, or anything like that. And you want them in an opaque container, a dark container. So something that might be, uh, like, like things that I have are like a canister or an aluminum canister. I even keep my tea leaves in a, like an old glass bottle, like a nice glass bottle with a lid on it. Though that's fine too, as long as I'm keeping it somewhere dark. Uh, I go through tea really, really quickly. I um, mean, you might imagine I own a tea business. There's a reason I own a tea business. It's because I drink a lot of tea. And I don't feel bad putting it in a glass container that might get a little bit of light because I'm gonna drink it pretty darn quickly. And I'll be refilling it from another container that is in a dark, dry, cool place. Usually it's in one of those, um, it's not aluminum, but it's like a plastic dark envelope. I, I, that's how I store a lot of my tea because that's how I receive it from a lot of the, the producers I get it from. So that is, that is my recommendation. I would not save your tea leaves. I really think that 
tea is best drunk that day. Poo, like you can brew it multiple times, right? So usually you're brewing your tea two to three times during that day and you'll steep it longer the more you're brewing it. There are exceptions to that, of course, like pu'ers. Pu'ers are fantastic and they're well known for being able to re-steep, you know, five or six times. So just know that you're going to be enjoying your tea that day. I wouldn't take it into the next day. At most, I maybe would drink that tea throughout the day. Okay. So that's, that's the answer to your first question. And yeah, so the second one, I don't think that, that tea leaves are going to keep. So have you met my cat Rocco? He's decided to join me today. Yes. Hi Rocco. How are you? Okay. He's going to cause some trouble in the background while I do this, but that's okay. Cause I'm a pro. I'm going to do this. All right. So let's talk about Question number three. Okay, I currently use Twining's Irish breakfast tea. What tea would be similar in flavor? So let me talk a little bit about English and Irish breakfast teas. So English teas and Irish teas are really blends of different black teas. When you're dealing with uh, English teas you, and Irish teas, you're dealing with usually Indian teas, but they've started to blend in African teas because now they're getting some black teas from Kenya. And that is something that is like a less expensive blend to put in there, like a, a less expensive filler. So Assam, Ceylon, uh, and Kenya teas, those are ones that you'll often find in these blends. And what distinguishes the flavor between an English breakfast and an Irish breakfast is the amount of Assam that's in it. Because Assam, A-S-S-A-M, and that's named after a region in India, is one of the maltier black teas that you will find on the market. And that's what the Irish were going for. They were going for a really strong tea, something stronger than that English breakfast tea, which wasn't quite strong enough for them. And that's um, that is what you're tasting. What you're probably enjoying the most out of that Irish blend is the Assam. So I would suggest finding any Assam and seeing if you like that. I know you got the 14 day tea tour, which is, um, what you, you got from me and that has an Assam in there. So I would suggest when you go through those teas, finding the one that of course that you like the best. I mean, the, that's the whole reason I did the 14 day tea tour is so that you could get that experience. So hopefully you will find one in there and you'll see that maltiness that I'm talking about in the teas that I, I gave you. So if you're interested in the 14 day tea tour, I've linked to that in the notes. All right, so let's see. Okay, the fourth question was, is with Twining's loose tea, some of it always makes its, makes its way through the infuser. So you, so you get that grit at the bottom of your cup. I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Okay, so I'm not really familiar with the Twining's Loose Tea, and the the tea leaves that I get aren't from from there, so I'm assuming that there's some broken leaves that, that's going on. I don't know what the quality of those loose leaf teas are. If you are dealing with like tea dust, if you're dealing with that ground powdery stuff, that is going to go through any infuser. I mean, that that stuff's just it's gross. You don't, you don't want that. So this is what I do. I have, um, I have a brew and mug tea infuser. And this is also an item that you see in different, um, like some of the, some of the teapots that I sell, they also have infusers like this inside them and they come with them. So I've linked to the accessories on SicilianTeaCompany.com, so that way you can see all of the variations of how this works, and you know you don't have to buy like five different infusers. You can get one thing, and you have your one-stop accessory. This is what I use. This is what I use at the office. So this is a brew and mug tea infuser, and the reason I love this one is because it has a really small sieve. And it's just like really tiny, fine uh, space so that those little bits don't get out into your cup. But if you're using really poor quality tea, I don't, I don't think that's going to help. It's also not going to help if you're drinking herbal teas. So for instance, 
I have a tea blend called Francesca and it has chamomile in it. Well, the chamomile flowers break up because they're dried. That's just what happens. And so it catches a lot of the chamomile from going into your cup. So you're getting less of that, but you're still going to get some. So here's a close up. Here, I'm also going to show it on Instagram. It is a close up. You can see the sieves really tiny, so fine that you can actually see through it. Isn't that weird? Okay. It's kind of cool. All right. So this is what you put in your teacup and it comes with this coaster and you can put it on top if you want to do that. But I usually just set it like this on, I have a little shelf for my teas and I set it down and that's it. All right. So my cat jumped behind me and he's on my chair. <laughs> Troublemakers. Okay. So that is what I use. And if you are somebody who wants to rebrew your tea throughout the day, it makes it really easy. I mean, that's exactly what I use at work as I put it on that coaster and I just come back to it throughout the day. All right. So that I think is it. So thank you so much for your questions, Kathleen. And if you have any questions, you can DM me if you're on Instagram at Sicilian Tico or you can ask me in the comments. You can also go to Dina at SicilianTeaCompany.com and let me know any of your questions. And I would love to answer them. I love doing this. I love being able to help uh, because there's so much information out there on tea. But where do you look for it, right? Unless you are a tea addict like me, you're probably not going to go to the trouble of doing that. So hopefully it makes it simple for you to find, to find an answer here. Okay, so speaking of answers... This book has a lot of the answers about tea. If you love tea, this is the book for you. Okay. So I talked about another bo other books, you know, in, in these lives. This is for the tea nerd. Okay. This is not a, a beginner's tea book. I mean, it can be. It, it does walk you step by step through things. There are better tea books for real beginners. And I'll let you, I, you know, I've talked about them in other broadcasts, but this one is for like the true tea nerd. If you want to know history of areas, regions where tea was grown, myths that have popped up surrounding where tea came from, if you want to know the um, like the granular what is in the dirt and the geography of a particular country in order to produce the tea that tastes the way that it tastes, this book is for you. And seriously, it but it's amazing. It's amazing and it's gorgeous. So here's like an example of the inside. Beautiful pictures, nice snippets. The people who wrote this book are the owners of Camellia Sinensis, which is a tea business in Canada. And they, they are serious about their tea, let me just tell you. And they talk to a lot of people who source tea and they, you know, they travel all over the world and they get an opportunity to learn things about tea that the average tea nerd would just drool over, right? Like it's amazing. So I have linked, it's an affiliate link. So if you, if you click on it, you know, I, Amazon like gives me a whatever percentage of it. So if, if you want that book, I've linked to it in the notes here if you'd like to, to check it out. I think it's cool. I'd probably get the hardback next time if, if you can find the hardback because the paperback, I've used it a lot and the binding doesn't quite stay in there as well as I would like. It's not bad. I mean, you can see it's not falling apart, but I, I like a tougher binding. That's just me. Okay. So if that's a book that interests you, if you are like looking for a great coffee table book and a conversation starter, that is a great book to have on your coffee table. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was a self-care ritual that, I don't know if I've talked to you about it before, I'm not sure. Um, have you ever heard of floating? If you've heard of it, let me know in the comments. I would love to know like, just how popular floating is now. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. So, hmm. but I do want to know what's going on at my particular float center because it's amazing. And I was introduced to it by a yoga teacher who swore by it. And I thought, all right, I'll give this a try. I was a little skeptical because I didn't really think that laying in a tub of salt water 
uh, I, I don't really see what that can do for me. But she swore by it, and I'm big on meditation and big on self-care, and I thought, okay, I need to do this. I need to try this. So I did it, and I tried it six months ago, and I, I can't get enough of it. I like to go every two weeks if possible. It is, like, if I could go, if I had time to do it, and I wanted to make that a priority in my life, because I, I always have enough time, it's just where do I want to prioritize, I would do it more often. But I have to prioritize self-care at least twice a week for floating. I do other things for self-care the other days. But twi like twice a month for floating. This is what happens when you float, okay? When I walk into the place where I float, first of all, people are really nice. So you can't be in a float center without being super nice because you get all these free floats and, and it makes you a nice, happy calm person. So if you have stress or anxiety or anything like that, I highly suggest you try it. You may get a little bit of stress and anxiety the first time though. Just recognize that that's just your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are the thinker of your thoughts. The float tank by itself, it has no, it doesn't give you any feelings. You're creating those feelings by using your thoughts. I know I'm getting into my whole coaching thing. If you don't already know, I have a podcast for my coaching business, and if you go to Soul Roadmap, um, if you go to the podcast like on iTunes and go to episode 18, I talk about exactly what I just said, which is you are the thinker of your thoughts, and we talk about how words affect your feelings and, and all of that and what's really creating anxiety in your life. It's, it's episode 18. You can also go to dinacataldo.com forward slash episode 18. But anyway, when you go into this float tank, you are going to have the opportunity to either have light music playing or and or light like a little light in there showing it's like usually it's a gentle light and if you want to go hardcore and i do i turn off the music i turn off the light and i just lay there floating on top of the water for an hour it is so satisfying at the end of it I always feel relaxed and calm, and oftentimes I feel more creative. So that's the time when I use to create like my coaching program or start brainstorming podcasts, that kind of thing. That is the time that I use, and I, I love it. It's really enjoyable. If you're in the Sacramento area, uh, go to Capital Floats. That's where I go, and they've actually given me a code so if you use that code, and I posted to it below, you can use that to get a discount off your first float. Ah, oh, okay. I think I've talked about everything. And if you have any questions about floating, let me know, because it's, it's something that not a lot of people are doing yet, and I really want to bring it to people's awareness. It's a great self-care center, and I think more of these floating like the places that offer floats are offering more self-care there. So if you're not into floating, you might be into something else there. For instance, at Capital Floats, there are two additional self-care things that I use. One of them is a somadone, and one of them is an infrared sauna. So the somadone, I've used it when it was back in the day. My friend actually created it, Sarah Atia. So shout out to her because she made her dream come true. She met Dr. Oz. He's like sat in a Soma Dome. I mean, it's amazing. It's a meditation chamber and it offers all these different settings and it's an opportunity to just sit there and relax. You can play music. You can not play music. You can have different light sensations in the, in this little chamber where you're sitting in and it has a dome over it. It's, it's lovely. I love it. The infrared is another opportunity for you to rejuvenate your muscle and rejuvenate your skin. Those are things like they're studying right now. It's definitely something that rejuvenates muscle. I have heard it rejuvenates skin. That is something that I'm reading. And of course, I'm into that. I'm, hello, I love that kind of stuff. So if you are looking for more self-care opportunities in addition to your tea ritual, I highly recommend you do that. So let me know what you think. If you go, come back, tell me. And be sure if you're watching the replay to hit like and let me know you were here, make a comment. And if you have any questions, 
email me at dina at siciliantecompany.com and I may even make a live video just for you. All right, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.